G'day everybody, where's Wally here? Well, the last couple of days or so I've been chatting with Anthony Riley, Sleeping Warrior. Ever since I showed him that star trails are indeed possible to be taken from the ISS, he's been having a go at me. We have been talking about gravity, yes. Tony went back to his safe place of gas pressure beside a vacuum or you need a container to have a pressure gradient. Who would have thought he'd do that? Well, I did manage to make Tony watch an old video of mine showing gravity is indeed a thing. And it was simple, just by observing two balloons, one filled with helium, one filled with air, and put them in a car. Now, as the car goes through a series of stop, start, turn, accelerations, those accelerations are undeniable, and the very definition of acceleration is a change in velocity or direction. So we see both of those in this car demonstration. And the conclusion is also undeniable, that there has to be another acceleration acting in the down direction for the angles of the balloons to make sense. Now, a link to the full video is up there in the corner, and in the description as always. Be kind to me guys, that video is well old now. Even Anthony as good as admits that there was two accelerations present by saying that the balloons would go horizontal if the acceleration was high enough, so it seems Anthony gets it. Then I decided it was time to have an even better explanation for Tony. Uh, should I ask him to look at what happens when a smartphone screen is rotated? Well, there's no density changes inside that phone, Tony, so what is happening? I decided to use the fish tank proof instead. Well, fish tanks are all the rage at the moment, aren't they? So, I took the spinning fish tank video. I grabbed a frame with the grid on it. That was really good because I had the measurements already. So the first thing I did was I calculated the RPM. That was from the frame count for one second, and I got 60.25 RPM. Then, I took a stab at measuring the angles of the curve at 10 centimeters and 20 centimeters. I got 21.6 degrees and 40 degrees. Now these angles were a bit rough, but that will do. So now that I've got my measurements locked in, what is the theoretical value that I should expect? Putting 60.25 RPM and then 10 and 20 centimeters into a centrifugal force calculator, I got 3.95 and 7.9 meters per second. Well, that doesn't really sound much, does it? But hang on. Now, if I add that to the gravity vector, the new vector, the product of these two, the new vector at 10 and 20 centimetres are 10.6 and 12.6 metres per second per second. Well, that's pretty boring wall, I hear you say. But you know what's interesting? If you work out what the angle of those two vectors are, they are 21.9 and 38.8 degrees. Wow, hey, that's almost exactly the same as what I measured before I started. Well, how cool is that? You know, the fun part is that given the angles and the distances and the rotation speeds, you can actually work backwards and calculate what the down acceleration would be. You know, that magical 9.8 meters per second per second. See, Tony, what I've done right here is I've actually measured gravity. And now this is something even you could do. Hmm, explain that, matey. You don't even need to put on your lab coat, mate. You could have a go at this and see if you can actually determine gravity all by yourself. You're a big boy, why don't you give it a go? This is an egg. This is a parts per million counter. So that's gravity measured right there, folks. Then I remembered somebody else had a problem with this. Who was it? Oh, that's right, it was Dell in the shed. So let's go and have a look at Dell in the shed and see what he thinks of this video. Dell did have a go at this a while back, so let's listen to what he says. So, I get video recommendations from morons that I don't even watch. In this case, a guy called Wolfie. The video titled, Show Me Bendy Water. Now what this dipshit doesn't realise is that he's debunking his own concept while at the same time trying to utilise a false equivalence, a misrepresentation of his actual belief and claim. Excellent video that I just watched. Shut up, you tap. No one hear you. No, Dell, we can't understand you, mate. What I would like these people to answer is: is, is their stance now changed? Have they now changed their stance to the Earth as a tank-shaped containment, which would be probably more likely than it, what it actually is? Have they now changed to that, and that they're now asserting that the tank 
Spins. Try again. Speak slower, Del. It is later in the video. They spin the tank with fish. And as you can see, the fish have no trouble at all swimming around normally while the tank is rotating. So how does he know the fish are not adjusting for it? Because I bet you they are adjusting for it. Because they will be experiencing the effect of being pushed outwards as this thing rotates. But the pomposity of this guy and the absolute stupidity is for him to assert that he has, you know, morphed into a fish. He's a shapeshifter. He can change into fish. He jumped in that tank, had a wee experience of it and then came back out and said, ah, it, it was just normal. Let's listen to what his take was on this gravity proof. Where we simply have the force of gravity, the fish have a normal orientation. At the ends, where we have a combination of gravity and centrifugal force, they are responding... Stop saying gravity. There's no gravity. Gravity is the upward force of the Earth. Right? Hang on, did I understand that? So Dell thinks there is no such thing as gravity, but there is an acceleration created by the Earth accelerating upwards. Well, that's very odd, Dell, but... Yeehaw! That's all we need, Del. So thanks very much. See, now that you've given us that, so that's all we need now to show that there is a pressure gradient without a container. Once you have that acceleration, a pressure gradient without a container is now totally possible. So thanks very much, Del, for that. You have just proven there is no need for a container. What's even more interesting is that the orientation of the fish changes depending upon where they are in the tank. At the That's center, right. Where and if we keep, if we put enough force, pressure on the tank to spin it fast enough, the water will separate here. There will be no water in the middle. And the water would go to the outer walls. The fish would now be orientated so that the wall here and the wall here, depending on which side they were on, would be the reference of down. Well, it seems both Del and Tony actually understand that there are two accelerations present. Both have said pretty much the same thing, that more horizontal component makes the overall effect more horizontal because they realise they've got to overcome that vertical component. Well, how about that? Hmm, explain that, matey. Then I saw Action Labs. He did a, a really brilliant video using the old vortex in the drink bottle. But what he did, he went an extra step, he put a camera on it, and then he dropped it. So what in effect he's doing is, instead of creating a vortex, by removing the vertical component, the gravity, i.e. free fall, no gravity, he can now see that the centrifugal forces push the water out, and it evenly coats the inside of the drink bottle. Which is what Dell was trying to get to, but he was never going to quite get there, because he didn't have infinite horizontal component. Well, how about that, guys? Well, I think that's about done. Gravity proven. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Del. Thank you, ball boys. Thank you, ball girls. Thanks for that. If you like what I've done here, give me a click, a like, and a subscribe, and we'll do some more thrashing of these guys. Well, we know what Anthony's going to say when he finally has a look at this. He's going to try and muddy the water. He's going to obfuscate by saying Newton doesn't equal Einstein doesn't equal whatever it is he wants to say. RDD or some silly stuff like that. Anthony, it doesn't matter. What does matter is we can measure, we can observe that there is a force, a, an acceleration acting in the down direction. And that's all we need to show that we do not need a container to contain the atmosphere to the surface of the planet. So go and play and think again. Hmm. Explain that, matey. Globetards, listen. You're trying to prove the atmosphere has no container. And I will show him the atmosphere sticking to the outside of the globe Earth. Now have a look at that. Right up here from up high, you can easily see it. And do you notice how that atmosphere doesn't need a container when you have gravity that's holding it to the planet? You can see all of those little dog piled columns of air side by side right the way around till they come back around the other side, can't you? Now just check out that line where you can see the top of the atmosphere in some places. How cool is that? I know what that guy's thinking of course, eh? Hey? Just tie a knot in it.